How's it going, everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another gameplay commentary. And today we're going to be talking about the reveal stream that happened about for uh, the Curse of Osiris DLC, the first live stream. I'm guessing with the next two live stream uh, videos, I'll be also putting up my own video responding to it, giving you guys some facts and those are my thoughts on the whole thing as well. Uh, I'm obviously not using gameplay or footage from the live stream itself because I'm afraid of copyright strikes. So you have to still stand with just some standard strike nonsense but anyways though uh, so in this gameplay video here I just want to talk about uh, you know what what the new Curse of Osiris uh, stream showed us what it's uh, entailing and what I think it might entail for gameplay and what I, my hopes and opinions are in there on everything as well so if you enjoyed this kind of commentary videos please make sure to tap that like button let me know you want to see more content like this and uh, let's get right into the video here so uh, Curse of Cyrus. We got the basically the story reveal of this one, and a little bit of gameplay as well, but mainly story. And what I mean by that is like you know, you got to see some uh, some cutscenes, stuff like that with uh, Osiris. Kind of understand a little bit more of like what the whole story is behind the campaign of the game as well. And obviously, without it giving away any spoilers, your basic you know information that you need to know, and. So, it looked rather interesting. I'm certainly excited to play it. Uh, I mean, I'm always down to play some more of the cinematics and gameplay of Destiny 2, because I thought the, the campaign for Destiny 2 was actually pretty good. It was fun to play. Not the greatest story, but it wasn't a bad one either. And so I certainly enjoyed it and would like definitely looking forward to this next one as well. Especially since this kind of goes into a little more of the history of uh, of the Guardians themselves, just because Osiris was one of the first um, vanguards. And so it's very important to understand like who he is and how important he he is to the entire universe of Destiny. So they get so this stream was supposed to give us just a little more context on the whole situation, which all for that is obviously because that's definitely one thing Destiny's always kind of lacked on is con is context. So hopefully we get to dive a little bit into that. Um, we actually got to see that uh, the strike they're bringing back the heroic strike playlist, which I'm all for that. Uh, strikes in this game, I think, are awesome. Uh, just like in Destiny 1, they're awesome. Really fun to play. Just the issue with them is the uh, the rewards, man. They're just they're just not that good. <laughs> and like you could, unless you're like you'd only play the strike players right now if you really wanted the vanguard armor set and weapons. But then you have to you know uh, take the uh, infusion of the of other weapons to make sure that those would get the weapons you would get from the strikes would just be up to par, which would be kind of a waste of time because you can't get those weapons anywhere else, and so it kind of re makes the strikes kind of pointless unless you're doing the nightfall. So now they're bringing back the heroic playlist, which puts the uh, light level up to 27, power level I should say up to 270, which is uh, definitely can be appreciated as well. I'm hoping for some scoring as well because I definitely like being able to see myself on top of the of the uh, squad when I see like, oh yes, I got the most points. I'm the best. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but the well, but. Even though it says it's going up to 270, which sounds great, but also the general power level is going up to a soft cap of 330 and hard cap of 335 with mods. So, even though they might bring back the heroic strike, it's um, unless they actually have decent rewards or unique items in there that are going to be really good, or it's just going to give you a chance to rank up your character continually playing strikes. I can only see this being useful for up until well, 270, 285 probably. Um, we also got to see a little bit of the Infinite Force, which is probably one of the sections I'm more looking, most looking forward to. Because I, I first heard that this was going to be procedurally generated, which was like, oh, really? This is going to be interesting. Turns out uh, it was confirmed in the stream that this is not going to be procedurally generated area of Mercury. But it's going to be an area that will constantly be changing. So you won't be playing the same areas, ex the exact same area, two times over. Uh, there are different, there are multiple variations of the same area, so of uh, different uh, enemies, different play spaces as well. So it's not going to be the same thing every single time, which I'm looking forward to that for sure. Uh, they mentioned more about with uh, missions in the stream, where are they any kind of uh, like uh, anything else really, which kind of worries me because if it's just going to be tied in with playing the missions of like the campaign when it comes to uh, the Curse of Osiris DLC. Uh, I feel like it's going to be a great idea wasted, <laughs> because obviously no one 
is playing Ikora missions to play through the campaign missions again to get legendary shards because we get already get enough of those already with uh, you know you don't get any rewards really at all worth noting when you're playing those uh, story missions over again so there really is no point at the moment to play that and I'm hoping that it doesn't come to that same situation with the uh, Infinite Forest because I'd love to be able to play through that kind of area again it sounds like there's a lot of potential for extra game time which I am all for and I'm just really hoping it doesn't get tied to just missions and then once you play through all the missions it's kind of pointless. Another thing we got to see is the lighthouse you know obviously uh, I was mainly a solo player in Destiny 1 and the people I did become friends with on Destiny 1 were not exactly the best uh, PvP players and uh, most people I found on <laughs> LFGs were not too interested. Uh, we're always just a uh, struggle to play with when it comes to LFGs and Curse of uh, Trials of Osiris. So I never got to, never got a chance to get to the lighthouse. Well, in this game, I'll finally get a chance to do it. Yeah, <laughs> reusing content. Uh, but uh, so it's I mean it's, there has to be a hub right for doing these missions and items and stuff and activities on Mercury you need to have a or your own vendor there so that's what uh, Vance is going to be and they're going to bring back the lighthouse which is all cool right there um, a really uh, interesting idea what they're bringing also is after you beat the campaign of uh, Curse of Osiris you'll be able to jump in and start doing these uh, weapon forging uh, looks like there was like tw 10 or 12 or something like that different kind of uh, markings on this wall that you, you know, each time you forge a new weapon, a marking fills up the wall. So then it's kind of like a, almost like a record book of weapon forging, which sounds pretty cool. I don't know if it's going to be like just tied for specific like weapon missions, or you can be able to just take any kind of weapon you want and infuse it with and forge it with any kind of uh, Vex technology. Now that would be really cool. But I have a feeling that this is going to probably stick more to just uh, having your specific weapon that you need to play through this procedure and do these things to unlock it which you know all cool with that as well uh, we did get to see a, a, a little bit of that in the stream as well they had one look kind of like a famas some crazy vex um, milky vines going through it same thing with uh, Deej's hand cannon that you showed in the stream as well and so definitely a great way to you know continue on the gameplay of um, the Curse of Osiris and uh, I was really kind of hoping for more of a record book, but I think this might be kind of a replacement for a record book. But I really liked the record books back in Destiny uh, Destiny 1 for uh, year 3, I think is when they implemented it. Year 2, something like that. Love the record books. I'd really like to see that come back, but I don't see it, I don't see it happening with Curse of Osiris right now. And lastly, I wanted to touch on was uh, the new raid content. Now, that was a very gray statement to say not the best word right there but you know what I mean that there's a lot of gray area when you mean by content I mean adding anything to the game is technically content I was expecting more just you know maybe new gear new weapons uh, things like that but not really giving you anything new to do in the game well I was wrong and I'm pleasantly surprised on that one is that we're getting a new raid layer which is going to be a subsection of the Leviathan so um, I'm definitely looking forward to that again. Play some new play spaces. This kind of sounds like it's going to be like a raid light kind of thing, where you get like a raid like activity, but maybe not so intense as a full raid. So then, if you're like, man, I really want to do like some awesome PvP PVE stuff, but uh, I only have like an hour maybe to play through, and it's going to take too long to try to get you know these people to get through the whole entire raid, then um, you know definitely these raid layers would be a great substitute for them now. I'm not exactly how the loot boxes, loot loot uh, table is going to work for that, obviously, because that was, hasn't been explained yet or played out at all. Uh, but at least we're getting something better than nothing. Uh, some more six-player content is where this game truly shines. The raids in this game are absolutely amazing. The Destiny, I'm continuing Destiny One. Can, I'm also adding in Destiny One as well with my statement on that one, and having more chances to play raid-like stuff. All for it. I mean, I'm still kind of holding out for a Prison of Elders kind of thing, but maybe a little bit more uh, procedurally generated. That's what my hope would be for uh, Destiny 2, because I really like Prison of Elders a lot. Uh, I think it kind of provided a lot of replayability, uh, but sadly, it's just kind of the same three sections over and over again. If there's ways to kind of mix it up, would really appreciate that in Destiny 2. Uh, so, 
you know that oh, other than that guys that's a pretty much all that was shown in the stream not a whole lot was revealed but obviously you have two more coming out i will make videos make give my thoughts on those streams as well so if you want to check out those videos make sure you subscribe to the channel let you know every time i upload awesomeness to this channel leave a like on the video if you enjoyed this kind of video and want to see more of it uh if you're guys excited for destiny 2 leave me in destiny 2's uh christmas cyrus dlc leave leave a comment down below i do read all the comments to try to reply to most of them as well check out the videos on the screen right now for more content from me and i'll catch you all in the next video peace out